Okay, I'm here this evening. Today is January 20th, 2017, Inauguration Day, with an old friend of mine, Knox Martin, and I am going to interview and ask some questions about him, about our mutual friend, which is the artist Don Ray. We met Don Ray, we've, all three of us met at, in about 1997, when Knox went to visit uh, an atelier where our friend, the artist Don Ray from Texas, had rented a space. And I remember that afternoon you walked in uh, to see a sculpture or something with a group of people, and that's how we met Knox Martin. Now, we knew of Knox's work and his art and everything, because we all studied art and examined art. But through the years, uh, Knox has become uh, a good mentor to Don Ray, and as well as my mentor. Thank you. Even though I don't paint, but let me start off with this question. Do you first recall when you met Don Ray? Yes, it was, it was a mistake. We drifted in and looked at looked at the work. Rose Murray was with me, and we looked at the work. And you were there with John, and uh, I began to talk about his painting. See, and his mouth dropped open, and <laughs> but it was a mistake. In other words, yeah, uh, I just in. drifted into this in, into the studio, and there was the work on the walls and being done. And I talked about it to him, and he was very he was very excited about my talk about his work. Yes, I remember that day as well. Also, um, can you elaborate about your uh, friend, uh, Fred Mitchell and Esteban Vicente and Philip Favia? Because, you know, uh, Knox, uh, as you know, you know them, of course, throughout the years. But uh, Don Ray was always fascinated with the relationship, the influence, and the epoch of those artists, among many artists, of course, that influence you. But for our interview purposes, this is a relation that Don would like to you know, give your insight on. Yeah, well, when I first met them, I was still a student, or an art student at the League. And uh, this was like the... Uh, It was like it was like a, a a place with certain barriers and things. If you s came close to a group that was discussing, and they would close you off. Really? Yeah. Ev everywhere, these people, artists and their wives and and their associates, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they would they would immediately close you off. And you were only invited if you, you could only enter that if you were that circle. Um, I was a mentor to Rauschenberg, and Rauschenberg had just gotten married, and his parents gave him a brownstone. Wow. Uh, parents, Susan's parents were well-to-do, and they had a brownstone. So Bob had a party, and he had a big painting of mine, and his painting and his wife's painting, Susan, Susan Weil. And he invited this little package of Torkov, de Kooning, Elaine de Kooning, and other people. So de Kooning sat on a couch and participated wow. between Bob, myself, and Susan. And the other group sat in the center and they didn't look at anything. And they talked among themselves about and they were talking about uh, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Not and Alice in the art world. <laughs> no, no, Alice in Wonderland, and they're going into details about how it complied with, and how how curious it was and amazing it was, and they didn't they didn't say anything to us. Wouldn't look at anything. They didn't want to be subject to. Uh, they ate everything. Oh, <clears throat> ate in, in terms of uh, opiates and no, 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 no. Every, every uh, Susan had a nice big okay Thin refreshment enough. thing, mm -hmm. and they ate it. They ate it all, but they wouldn't even look at us. You know, I later became very friendly with uh, Elaine de Kooning, and uh, we had great conversations together. Uh, 
But Philip Pavier and these guys had started putting together, like the club, which was a, an enterprise that grew and grew and grew and finally fell into the hands of the more so-called advanced galleries and things. Um, in other words, on the, on the verge of the stuff that we did in the abstract expressionist movement. I see. Uh, Pollock, de Kooning, uh, Franz Klein, uh, is it a big a big group of people, Barnett Newman. Barnett Newman, I remember. Yeah, a big group of people that, that you had a label that was like, you know, what value of label uh, de Kooning was radically different from, from Pollock or, or Rothko or Ed Reinhardt or Barnett Newman. They were all radically different. Right. But, but the label, it was a label, abstract expressionists. Right. See? And uh, many of them didn't, didn't agree with it. The only person who really fit in that kind of thing was Pollock's stuff. Abstract expressions, and it came. This whole thing came out of Bauer, and 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 uh, the guy he emulated was Kandinsky. Kandinsky. See, they were non objective <coughs> painters, and Bauer, backed by uh, Hilary Bay, and Solomon oh, Guggenheim. Right. Solomon Guggenheim. <coughs> uh, backed Bauer all the way, and. That was the content, the Kandinsky and the Bauer, the content of the of the Guggenheim Museum when it was downtown. Interesting. Also, there's been two curious questions that not only Don Ray and I were always curious to ask, and can only ask to a great artist or a knowledgeable artist through the time and experiences, because there's no such thing as great, according to some people, or best or worst. It was just through your journey of life, the bridge between the so-called abstract expressionist and the Cobra, Copenhagen, Brussels, Antwerp, is there a bridge, Maestro, or is there? Only, only if you say so. You know, uh, uh, Einstein's de declarations that man invented the cosmos, mathematics, and philosophy, man invented this. Right. So if you follow that through, uh, and and you can really see it, uh, there's there's a big jump to be made, in the sense of you know, in other words, man made all the gods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's it's a wild state to look at Einstein, uh, and then the actions of a Picasso and a de Kooning in art, and uh, the vast difference between the people who the people who just fell away from art and they and they they imposed something into art that had nothing to do with art uh, and it took art's place and that was the Florentine Renaissance. Florentine Renaissance. I've seen you mention that before. Yeah, right? the Florentine Renaissance. And they dug up the, the magnificent Greek sculpture and they gave it uh, position, uh, extensor digitarius, serratus magnus, they give it anatomy and they killed the art. In other words, the deep art that moved out of, moved out of uh, the content of what the, the artist himself had exposed them to, which was a background of art. To surround yourself with art is very different than to surround yourself with uh, everything that pretends to be art. Exactly. There is the truth and the perception of the truth, I guess, or something like that. Uh, so thank you for that question. Um, do you recall speaking about Don Ray in a one-man museum show in Manhattan that he had in... Clara Cole Gallery, 1998. Do you recall that? And 
can you elaborate and give us your thought and what you remember? Because I remembered you did attend his one-man show at Clara Cole Gallery back in 1998, and you uh, kind of looked at his work and, and gave us a brief synopsis of his work. But since this is a, a documentary that we're documenting... Yeah, remind me a little bit of, this, of the synopsis of what you remembered that I said, then yes. I'll go into it. Please. Please. Yeah, will you say something about it? Sure. Um, you, uh, at that time, it was the uh, Visual Prayers uh, series of paintings that um, Don Ray had done. And I remember because, you know, I actually sat there while he painted most of those paintings, watching all day and criticizing step by step. Uh, some good, some bad, but <clears throat> you uh, said something about those paintings that uh, not only shocked him, but me, that you saw more than what the artist saw, and you have awakened uh, him to your, uh, you know, view of the, how you view things in, in terms of art, and how he was basically looking at things through the lens of the pedestrian culture in the art world, which transformed Don Ray completely. Well, well, he told me that I gave a series of lectures and he attended the talks with slides and a laser pointer and this opened up what he was really doing himself. He was, he was, he was, he was, the wild thing is that every once in a while someone is born with an odd structure and you do it off and on and finally you begin to pour out this thing that is innate in one and by a, a glance at something in a museum or something like that you, you, you are uh, vaccinated. Immunized, vaccinated. <laughs> okay. you know, and and the vaccination opens up uh, the perception of more than more than the intellect is involved with. The intellect is something else. All thought is old, and the intellect is part of that. But there's a deeper recognition that that, that is beyond the perception of anyone except someone that's. that's it's, it's 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 like being born with a with a with a cleft mouth or 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 whatever have you born with this strange thing. Cezanne has said it. Every every thousand years, someone like me is born. He says Cezanne, and and uh, some official bumped into him and says, "Don't you know that you just bumped into Cezanne?" See. And, and he recognized, he, he really recognized that he was in advance of anybody. Renoir gave him a supper and praised his work and Cezanne said, uh, are you making fun of me too? To Renoir. Yes. You know, he was, he was highly sensitive and skittish about his position and uh, The, the remarkable thing is that Matisse said, I worked with Cezanne. Picasso said, Cezanne is my father. De Kooning has said, everyone thinks I'm a super cubist, but I, it's Cezanne that I work through. I see. see. So this guy was like influential beyond reckoning. Right. Okay. So, and, and, and Don Ray's sensitivity fits into that C. Oh. I see. Perfect. You know, and when, and when, he, when he hits a metaphor, he's right there in the middle of things. Yes, yes. Let's stop this thread. Stop it. 